Hello there Lunar Squadron and welcome back to the channel. We have an important news update for you all today in regards to LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga as we got some important launch information for this game that is only about a month and a half or so away. So in this video we're going to go over all of this important launch information, break it down and tell you just exactly what we think it means going forward. But before we do all of that, Andreas, I believe we have a brief message. That's right, Nick, we do. Uh, now, before we get into this one, I just wanted to uh, apologize profusely to General Grievous. Grievous, I know last time, like, Boss totally, like, you know, kicked you out in, in the spotlight. And, like, we had agreed that you'd, you'd come in and say hi to everybody. So, I just wanted to apologize about that. So, if I, I, I'm sorry, man. I, I'm just, I'm sorry. You do not scare me, Mongrel! Your howling will soon become cries for mercy. Alright, I, I take that as don't mess with Grievous anymore, boss. Like, I, I just wouldn't do it. I don't think it's worth it. Like, just don't do it. Anyway, with that, let's get into the video. This is Lunar Squadron standing by. We are ready to make the jump to hyperspace. On my mark, Lunar Squadron. guys it is lego star wars news time uh we got some new information about this game nick why don't you go ahead and kick it off let us all know what we got today yeah so we actually got some important launch update information in regards to lego star wars the skywalker saga we now know the reported size of the ps5 version for this game and again this is without the day one patch so at its base, this game comes in at 38.182 gigabytes. Again, just want to reiterate that is without the day one patch. So you can assume that the day one patch is going to add, what, roughly 10 to 15 gigabytes probably. I mean, we don't really know for sure. Those day one patches always vary in overall size. Just what is required by that particular game. So I'm expecting once it's all said and done, day one patch downloaded, that this next gen version, at least on the PS5, is going to come in roughly around that 50 gigabyte number now andreas i know that a lot of people around the internet on social media i've seen this a lot when i was going through all of this information were very concerned about the fact that this game is only going to be 38 gigabytes that's what i keep seeing wow lego star wars the skywalker saga on next gen is only going to be 38 gigabytes no way it's as big as they said but is this something we should really be concerned about you know, I think the answer to this question is probably like two parts. One of it is like, should we be concerned about the Switch file size? And I think we'll get to that later. Uh, for now, just on this next gen file size number, I am not concerned at all. And the reason being is this conversation sounds very familiar to me. It is because this is the exact same thing that everybody was freaking out about when they announced the file size of Ratchet and Clank. As you guys know, Ratchet and Clank is, uh, if, you, if you've played PS5, uh, if you've played it on PS5, or if you've seen gameplay, like this is a stunning game, very highly acclaimed game. When it was announced, the, the file size of 33 gigabytes, everybody was saying, how can this game be as good as they're saying it's going to be if it's only 33 gigabytes? And well, the answer is that with the new next gen solid state drives, they are able to compress the file sizes of these games substantially. The focus of de the design behind the PS5 in particular was to get the file size down uh, so that, you know, you can hold more games on your hard drive and that you don't, aren't walking around with Call of Duty sized games, which is a Activision is a company that just doesn't know what a compressor is at all. So if you if you ask me, like, am I concerned about this at all? No, I don't think file size is going to dictate at all how big the game is when we've had some pretty big substantial games that were in around that 50 gigabyte mark. I'm thinking of God of War, for example, 45 gigs at launch. That game is my favorite game to date, which is graphically stunning, just like Ratchet and Clank. 
again in that same area and when i have you know my favorite game is being in around that gigabyte space i'm just not at all concerned there are plenty of reasons to be concerned about things in life this just isn't one of them for me i mean what, what do you think nick no, I actually want to touch on a couple points you made, and it's the same reasons I'm not concerned at all. The point of these next-generation consoles were to increase the overall efficiency at compressing these files. So this is exactly what we should and want to be seeing. These large games being smaller file sizes, this is all what we are asking for. You know, I really think people have been, you know, colorblinded or blinded by these big sports games out of EA that are just massive file sizes and Call of Duty and Activision's inability and honestly just unacceptable just it's flat out unacceptable I can't think of a better word unacceptable how big the file sizes are for these Call of Duty games these like a, a Call of Duty game will run you half your solid state these days it's ridiculous they these games should not be this file size so I'm actually very pleased to see that TT was able to take a game this big and compress it down to a very manageable file size. And you have to remember this 38 gig is not the true number because with that day one patch, it's most likely going to be closer to that 50 gigabyte range, whether that be 45 or even up closer to 60. So it's still going to be pretty sizable. Now, the other thing I want to talk about before we get into the other little bit of news we got in regards to launch information is if you take a look at some of the other LEGO games, that have launched on like PS4, for example, because this is going to be our first true PS5 title when it comes to one of these mainstream LEGO games. If you just kind of go through the file sizes on PS4, they're roughly in that 16, 18 gigabyte range. So this game is still at least double the file size and the aim of these next generation consoles, unlike that previous generation or this current gen, I should say now it is technically the current gen, was more efficient compression in their files. So again, no reason to be concerned. I just wanted to touch on that, Andreas, and I know you did too, just because we've kind of seen people freaking out all across social media since this news came out. And I just really think that's important to kind of just, you know, spread calmness because there's been a lot of panic about things. You know, the game's being delayed or the game file size is too small. Like, calm down. Everything is fine. Now, the other bit of information we got today is we actually got the preload date for the PlayStation 5, that being April 3rd. Now, Andreas, I don't know about you, but the big thing this tells me is that if they're willing to give us a preload date reportedly, that makes me feel very, very good about April 5th. I really believe we are truly locked into this April 5th date. And again, preload date April 3rd. What are you thinking? This, you know, I don't know if this has other any bearing to this or not. It just honestly seeing a preload date and then being able to like solidify that and pick one like concretely makes me feel very good about the state of this game right now. I mean, I think for the folks in the audience who thought that this game was going to be delayed after we got the gameplay overview trailer, after we got all of this marketing, after we got the fan fest appointment, after we got all of that, the folks who are still saying you know, that this game was going to be delayed after the reviews were coming out, after the all this buzz from devs on the game, after all of that, like, you guys were already, like, dealing with nothing. Like, th this game was not delayed at that point, and now, like, there's yet another, you know, feather in the cap of this game is coming out. Like, it is just, like, if anybody tells you that this game is being delayed, they are trying to get a rise out of you, do not listen to them, it is coming. You will get your hands on this game when it releases on April 5th. That is the date. Like, there is just, like, no need to even fly that question anymore. Now, I guess the last bit of news to talk over with this video is the file size on the Nintendo Switch. Which, what was that, Nick? Yeah, so this actually kind of came out a few weeks ago and it flew under the radar. But I just wanted to touch on it since we are talking about the PS5 file size. So we do know that the Nintendo Switch file size is roughly 15.6 gigabytes. Again, I don't know about you, Andreas. I'm not concerned about this. That is pretty standard practice when it comes to Nintendo Switch file sizes. They are aiming to compress their files. That is definitely not our main concern in regards to the Nintendo Switch. What do you think? Anything to be concerned about 15.6 gigs? Seems pretty standard. 
I mean, uh, one notable game that I immediately thought to look up was what was the file size of Breath of the Wild? Obviously, another open world game, uh, which was pretty damn expansive, honestly, if you guys have played Breath of the Wild. Very big map, a lot going on there. That game was 13.4 gigabytes, so the Skywalker Saga will be even bigger than the Breath of the Wild. Now, of course, that is a native Nintendo game. Uh, whereas this is, you know, third party, so I don't know if that is going to factor into their maybe inability to compress as well as Nintendo might be able to running natively on, you know, the console which they designed, so I'm not sure if that impacts that at all. Um, however, it is, again, a sign that this game isn't small by any stretch of the imagination. I think you hit the nail on the head, Nick. This isn't our biggest concern with the Nintendo Switch at all. My concern with the Nintendo Switch is, is this game, as advertised, going to be running on the Nintendo Switch? My opinion on that is not going to make everybody happy, but I think it's an honest concern here. I think I, it, it, it's hard for me to imagine that this same game that we're seeing on PS5 is going to even remotely run the same way as it will run on the Nintendo Switch. We will be testing that on release so that we can air that out immediately and cut the speculation and just give you guys the answers so that you can make an informed purchase because that is ultimately our goal is to shed light on these things. Yeah, you know, that I, I totally agree with that. You know, recently I was trying out a beta for a game that is coming out actually on the exact same release date. Now, again, it's not a game made by TT Games. It is not a Lego game, so it's not in any way related in that regard. But I tried out the beta on both PlayStation 5 and on Nintendo Switch and on the PlayStation 5 everything was running great it looks graphically great 60 frames looks fantastic great frame rate very stable and then I fired it up on my Nintendo Switch because I just wanted to see right now apples to apples what a game coming out on a current generation game on a current generation console will look like on Nintendo Switch just because it's going to be the same game. How different would it be? And when I fired it up on Nintendo Switch, it was very framey. There were frame rate drops. The resolution was very noticeably worse. And the only thing I could think of was I'm just concerned about Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. So I'm not concerned about the overall file size. Again, we've known this for a few weeks. I just wanted to bring it up since we now know the information about the PlayStation 5. I just kind of wanted to compile it all into one video, but I just wanted to touch on what our concerns are. It's not with the file size. It is with that overall performance when this game releases. And like Andrea said, we will be doing a full review of the Nintendo Switch version since a lot of you have actually asked us to do so. So we are going to do just that, just so you know before you spend your hard-earned money on the Nintendo Switch version, we're going to let you know whether or not we think it is worth it. Anyway, guys, let us know down below in the comments how excited you are for LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, how excited you are for this IGN Fan Fest tomorrow. We're going to learn so much more information. We now have a preload date for this game. We are in the endgame. The day is coming very soon. We are only a handful of weeks away. So exciting. So let us know down below what you're most excited for. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for us for this one. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. And as always, we will see you all next time.